Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, welcome back to the UCC truck build. So, yesterday I spent a bunch of time in the garage, I didn't film anything because it was all welding and just crap like that. So, got our front uh, front weight box mounts all finished and dialed in. Um, we got all of our holes drilled, so we'll be running three three quarter inch bolts here that will go through the frame, and then two here to tie the two plates together with some nuts in the back there. Um, got that all done, got everything welded out. I also added some plate over some of the weld joints just to make it even stronger. Um, it's a quite a bit of overkill, I think, but it's weight up front we need weight anyway so why not um like as you can see most of the plates are pretty much doubled up so i th i'm very confident that this will be good because like i said we got three bolts going through the frame and then we have our two pieces of angle overlapping the top so that'll help pull down on the whole thing but yeah got all of our holes drilled in the frame everything's good they bolt up i did try them with the weight box again and everything is still good also added these um i don't know if you want to call them adjusters they're more of like a tightening clamp so when we put the weight box in put the pins in let it off the engine hoist we can tighten these down and just kind of make up the little bit of slop in the receiver here that way that thing's not doing this while we're going down the sled pulling track and kind of rattling along uh, just trying to keep it as tight as possible keep it from trying to slap down and actually cause some damage to you know our assembly or the frame or whatever just a little something to take that crap you know that slack out of there so tonight we're going to moving back to our front suspension what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be gusseting our uh our coilover shock hoop so i made some gussets out of plate we're going to gusset all four of those just a little extra safety um just to keep it from wanting to pull or push you know with the weight of the engine on there with the suspension and all that um i really don't i don't know that it's necessary but we're going to do it anyway just to uh you know have that security that peace of mind and all that so that's where we're going to start uh we got a couple other little jobs to do um we're going to put our flex plate back in with a new little uh tool or little device to help keep the flex plate secure which i'll show you later in the video we're going to do that because hopefully tomorrow we will get to putting in our Muldoon's 48RE and Suncoast converter. So that's kind of the game plan. We'll just kind of, we got a couple little odd jobs to nitpick here tonight and then hopefully get our transmission in tomorrow. So that's the plan, let's get to work. Man, isn't that fancy? So, got our gussets welded in, looking good. Very happy with them. Uh, a little bit of a pain in the butt uh, to get in, you know, the back areas and all that. And with all the crap, I actually had to pull the intake piping off of this side. I pulled the uh, hood stack off on that side. But, got it all done. And then I threw a coat of paint on that and our four length, just so that way we have a little bit of rust prevention. And before we put everything back together and then go, oh crap, I got to paint well we're good so got that done we also got our shock reservoirs 
relocated so they're out of the way of the hitch so they're good there i'm very very happy with that as well very simple and just move them not a big deal so got that taken care of so our next step is actually to install our flex plate that way we are ready to uh, install our Muldoon's transmission when we are ready um, anyhow so here is our Suncoast 12 volt flex plate and we have these ARP bolts with Nordlock washers these come with the DNR customs uh, flex plate installation kit so the Nordlocks are very nice. They also have you take all the um, black coating off the bolts and you use red Loctite. And the other thing they have you do is to uh, try to prevent friction welding of this to the crank. They actually have you put RTV on the crank and then you put your flex plate on and the RTV is supposed to help with the friction welding. So as you guys can see, we've had a little bit of a problem with the friction welding ourselves. Um, and I believe this is just, just from Cecil. Um, this, this flex plate I don't think was on the truck when we were down in Florida and all that, if I remember correctly. So anyhow, the friction welding is an issue with these high horsepower trucks. Um, flex plates can come loose, all that. If you're doing something like this, you wanna get a good quality flex plate. Ours is a Suncoast one, because we have a Suncoast converter. The 12 bolts line up. What's really nice about the Suncoast one, is they have one bolt hole with a tighter tolerance than the rest. So if you start that bolt, you can run that one all the way in, and all the other bolt holes will line up. Now, onto the friction welding. We are actually gonna take care of this a different way than the DNR Customs kit. So, like I said, they have you apply RTV to the crank, and I guess that's what those guys with their truck have found to work to try and keep the thing from friction welding. Uh, I believe the technical term is actually called fretting. Um, so, we're gonna go a different route. Um, a buddy of mine reached out to me and pointed something out to me. This is something that like top fuel dragsters use, pulling trucks. I don't know, maybe it's just something that I hadn't heard of personally, but I haven't seen anybody post anything about it. But this is something that I think all the high horsepower trucks should do. And that is this diamond claw washer. So as you can see, diamond claw surface lock. So what this is, is it's a little eight thousandths thick uh, diamond impregnated washer. So what this is supposed to do is stop the friction welding and it just kind of grabs on either side. So that's what we're going to use. Like I said, if you go on, if the company's name is Shaft Tech, go on their website and check it out. Um, they're pretty reasonable. They're like a hundred bucks or so. Uh, but if it keeps that flex plate from coming loose, which if it does, now you got to pull the trans, the converter, all that. If it keeps that from coming loose and keeps it from um, trying to friction weld and just you know ruining the crank, then it's well worth the money. So. We're gonna try this out. Um, like I said, if you look on their website, it, it's used in a lot of really, really high horsepower applications. Um, maybe there are guys in the diesel world using it, but it's not something that I'm really aware of. Um, and I wasn't aware of it before, or we would have had one in there before. So this uh, Diamond Claw Surface Lock Washer, all it does is you clean your crank, you clean your flex plate, and this gets installed in between the two. Now it's only eight, um, thousands thick so it won't really mess with any of our converter stuff or anything like that but you put it in dry you don't put any oil or anything on it when we put our Loctite our red Loctite on our bolts we just got to be very careful that it all just gets in the hole and all that so that's uh, my recommendation to you guys is if you have a high horsepower truck or you've had problems in the past with the flex plates check out this uh, diamond claw claw diamond claw washer um, and hopefully that will resolve your issues. Uh, that's what we're doing here, and I, I see no reason that it shouldn't work. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a flex plate installed, but there's a little issue, and that is our, yeah, our mock-up transmission, transfer case, drive shaft. That's all installed currently. So we're gonna pull all that out, pull the drive shaft out, the transfer case, and our mock-up transmission. Not that it's a big, big deal, I mean, our regular transmissions here so it's got to come out anyhow so we're gonna get this flex plate installed uh with our diamond claw washer red loctite on the bolts and then we'll torque them i forget what the torque sequence is i'll have to look at it but it's up to like 150 or 160 foot pounds and uh yeah so then we'll move on from there so we'll get to pulling out our mock-up transmission
Well, our Suncoast flex plate is installed. Um, unfortunately, uh, when I grabbed my camera, it was off. I think the, uh, well, I know the memory card was all full up, so you guys didn't get to see the whole thing, but it's nothing earth shattering. Um, I cleaned all the threaded holes in the crank first, just to make sure I get rid of any debris, any old Loctite, stuff like that. So I cleaned those all out. Then I put our Diamond Claw washer and our flex plate on. Um, and then proceeded to put Loctite and bolts in and just put them in kind of in pairs and tight, you know, snug them up and then, you know, go to the next pair. And then when we had them all in, we torqued them all to 50 foot pounds in a star pattern, then to 100 foot pounds, then 125, then to 150, and then around once again. So nothing, nothing uh, crazy, you know, simple enough. So uh, not like you guys missed a whole lot. But other than me struggling with the torque wrench at that 150, trying to do it while sitting upright, I had to lay down on the ground. But anyhow, um, and also I put a um, ratchet on our fluid amper on the full power kit. I put a, a long breaker bar on the, um, the driver for that, you know, so the barring tool that's built into the fluid amper uh, full power kit. So I put that on there to keep the crank from turning because otherwise you want you're trying to turn the engine over and it doesn't work out too well trying to torque something while it's trying to rotate <laughs> so um, something there um, you can do it do it that way or if you have the barring tool that goes into the um, adapter plate you can do it that way as well but that's easy enough just let that breaker bar sit on the frame rail good to go the only thing is you just got to make sure you remember to remove it before you ever try and start the uh, the truck because yeah that would be no bueno so we're just gonna get that out of there right now so anyhow guys that uh shaft tech diamond washer um like i said buddy of mine uh showed it to me and i think it's a good idea i think it's something that's really gonna really gonna help um they're not paying me i just called them up and ordered it like anybody else uh ordered it direct from them it was like 95 dollars was 25 dollars shipping which $25 shipping for that little thing. I don't know why, but anyhow, it is what it is. Uh, but if it keeps, it's obviously going to keep the crank and the flex plate from uh, friction welding together because there's obviously that space in there, but it, hopefully it'll keep things from becoming loose because we don't want the, the flex plate bolts coming loose because then we got to pull the trans, pull the converter, you know, it's a whole thing. Um, and it's just a royal pain. Uh, we have got Loctite on there. They're tight. They're torqued. But, you know, these things, when they're making this kind of steam, the kind of steam that we're going to try and make with this thing, stuff just comes loose for no good reason. Like we've had the problem with our flex plate to converter bolts. Uh, that's why we stepped up to the Suncoast 12 bolt. So that way, hopefully, we don't have any issues with that. Though, every pass or two, definitely should climb down there and check them. Um, with our setup, it's very easy because we have no obstructions to get to it. So it's easy enough to go put a wrench on them and uh, just check it between rounds because, you know, that thing gets loose and yeah, it might not be a problem the first time, but then you start, you egg out the holes and it just, it slowly becomes a big thing. And then you gotta get a new flex plate and you know, those billet flex plates, they're not cheap. Uh, but you got to have one because it's SFI rated. But we also have our Logan built SFI uh, certified plate that we're going to put in for the first time when we put our Muldoon's 48 back in the truck. So that should be coming in the next day or two. I know our coilovers are due in the next day or two as well. So we'll be doing some more stuff, getting the truck back on the ground, which I'm excited about. So once we get our coilovers and our transmission in, I think we need a new oil filter, hook our steering up, hook our four link up. Um, yeah, I still gotta get bolts for that. Um, run, reroute all our lines and stuff that we had disconnected, reconnect that, remove our hitch, and I think we're ready to go to the track. Yeah, I'll have to uh, double, tri triple verify everything, but yeah, I think once we get our transmission and our coils over it, coil overs in, we should be able to go to a test and tune, kind of get to run this thing again yay so anyway i hope you guys are excited i am so i hope you enjoyed please like the video subscribe down below get out in your garage get the wrench on your truck 